I've been a part of the FNAF community since the day Final Fantasy 3 released. That was eight years ago now, meaning I've been in the community since I was seven. Yikes, I got into this series way too young. Regardless, I loved FNAF 3 even if I sucked at it. FNAF 3 is also why my favorite character in this series for years was Springtrap. That changed, however. I'm talking about you, Security Breach. Even so, FNAF 3 changed me forever and influenced me in a way no other game series had, with only Benny and Ink Machine coming close. That's partially why I put 3 in the S tier. What? Is that controversial? I have way worse opinions, mate. Anyway, since I've been here since March 2015, I've seen a lot of stuff go on and I've heard various opinions from FNAF fans about various things. From their opinions on the games, to the books, to the character designs. Speaking of the last one, that actually happens to be a topic of this video. The Phantoms are typically ranked very lowly in the FNAF community for one reason. Their designs. Uh, that's, uh, that, 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 that's it. I'm serious. In this video, I'll go over their history, take a look at their designs, and why they're super overhated. Hi, I'm Volton from Voltage Productions. Welcome to the show. The first time we see the Phantoms is in the sixth teaser for Fives Phrase 3. More specifically, the infamous Guess Who teaser featuring a new look for a balloon boy. Unlike his appearance in Fives Phrase 2, he's rotten and charred, presumably from a fire. I wonder if now foreshadows anything. After that, we get a teaser of Plastic Chica and Wyvern Foxy, but with the aforementioned Rotten and Chart appearance. These teasers were the only ones we got of the Phantom animatronics. After a lot of speculation, we finally found out what the rest of the cast is when Final Fantasy 3 released on March 2nd, 2015. Now, you don't actually experience anything in the game until Night 2. That's when the first few Phantoms start appearing. Typically, you first see Phantom Bloom Boy, and see more and more phantoms as the game goes on. The phantoms were unique in that they didn't kill you when they jump scared you. Others like Phantom Angle and Phantom Puppet didn't jump scare you, but more so just distracted you. If you saw Mangle on a camera, she'd peek over your office window and let out a loud screech. Hi. If you spot the puppet on camera 8, it'll appear in your office and block your vision with a noise that I, I can't describe. After FNAF 3, they were implemented into FNAF World with admittedly, well, mid designs, but okay, listen. A lot of FNAF World's designs were honestly pretty bad, so just bear with me here. They didn't return until Ultimate Custom Night, where Phantom Freddy, Phantom Angle, and Phantom Bloom Boy came back as three of the 50 characters. Two of these guys with their exact mechanics were Fights of Race 3. They immediately come back in the very next game, FNAF Help Wanted, more specifically in the FNAF 3 mode. Well, most of them. Half of them or so just decide to kick the bucket. After Help Wanted, these guys just decide to die. We haven't seen them since then. They only appeared in three mainline games and one spin-off, yet they're so hated. To start off, let's talk about Phantom Balloon Boy and Phantom Angle. From a design standpoint, their models are 100% identical to their FNAF 2 counterparts. In terms of visual appearance, they are charred and rotten black eyes with white pupils with irises that are gray and fuzzy. This is the general theme of the Phantoms. Phantom Chico follows this general theme. However, she is actually somewhat unique. The other Phantoms use her FNAF 2 models, while Chica oddly uses her FNAF 1 model. She's the only one to use her FNAF 1 model and not a FNAF 2 model. The reason for this is unknown. She also happens to be notorious for looking like a watermelon. This joke was acknowledged by Scott, with it being referenced in a FNAF World loading screen. Phantom Fred and Phantom Foxy, I'm going to talk about together, as they both use FNAF 2 models, and they also have a bit of uniqueness to them that the other Phantoms don't have. 
while they do have the same general theme being rotten and charred, they are also actually missing parts. Phantom Fox is missing his arm and Phantom Freddy, his leg. On topic of Phantom Freddy, he doesn't actually use Wyvern for his model, he uses Wyvern Golden for his model. Notice the wires? These two also look completely different in Help Wanted. They don't use Wyvern Golden Freddy and Wyvern Fox he as a base. No, 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 no. They use classic Freddy and classic Foxy. This is because at the time, Steel did not have the models for the Wyvern at the time. So they used the F1 models. Thing is, they later did add the Wyverns in the FNAF 2 mode, in a special minigame called Wyvern Mode. You'd think they'd fix the Phantom variants, but they don't. They still have not been updated to this day. Finally, we have Phantom Puppet. The Puppet is an interesting case, as when in Camera 8, he uses the exact FNAF 2 model with the FNAF 2 textures. When no Phantom Puppet appears in the office, however, he uses the Phantom texture. Viewing its exact appearance though, Puppet is very different. Its body is practically pitch black, with only the head being visible. The rotten and charred mask just barely visible, compared with the same eyes that phantoms are known for. In general, although similar, some phantoms have distinct features, and even in other models entirely from the other phantoms. I do think we should get to meet the cowbo by now, and talk about why they're hated and why I think you honestly really shouldn't. The Phantoms already had a rough start, and that's in part because of the fact that their models are either mostly or entirely reused, with FNAF 3's only brand new character model being Springtrap. I can understand where this is coming from. During the build-up to FNAF 3's release, FNAF hype reached an all-time high only ever challenged by the hype build-up to Security Breach. With hype being through the roof for the third entry, only to be met with 7 characters with 6 being reused models, and the game being pretty simple overall only being half the size of FNAF 1. In-game, they mainly exist as Springtrap was, at the time, intended to be the final animatronic still standing, and without them, game would be too easy. But they kind of come across as annoying sometimes, and they can be the very thing that ends an amazing nightmare aggressive only run. Though they all have a variety in how they can be dodged, they still come across as annoying and badly implemented. Get this, however. These are the best reasons I can personally think of as to why they are disliked. They maybe have annoying mechanics and bad models, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. If your reasoning for disliking characters is their visual appearance and how they work, then that's a big yikes from me, my guy. I know a lot of people don't like them because of their appearance. This is generally why most people hate them. I get where people are coming from here. Think of them as lazy, poorly designed, because, well, they're just the older models, just retextured. However, there's a pretty simple and beyond obvious explanation here. The explanation is quite literally their names. They're phantoms. A phantom is quite literally defined as a ghost. The phantoms are ghosts of the past. Memories of what should have been forgotten from a pizza chain with an awful background full of misery and tragedy. They are phantom variants of past characters because they're the ghost versions of the animatronics. If they had new designs, that would lead to a theory more bull than anything MatPat has made these past months. People would wonder what location these new character designs came from, and that would only further complicate the FNAF lore. I mean, look at this chart of the FNAF lore! To keep the lore somewhat simple, the Phantoms had to be ghosts of old animatronics. Making fresh designs would not make any sense. Also, I'd like to add that if you're thinking that the Phantoms are bad because they are reskins of past characters, but still adoring characters like Frey, Frostbear, and Chocolate Bonnie, to very well received reskins, then you're a bit of a hypocrite. As for the other point, I have reason to believe that without the Phantoms to destroying the player temporarily and cause systems to fail, Vance Phrase 3 would have been truly too easy. Imagine if FNAF 3 only had Springtrap. The player would only need to hold him at camera 10 with the corresponding vent being shut. The Phantoms end up preventing that from happening. Maybe if the game had the power mechanic from FNAF 1 return here, 
maybe Spring Trip being the only character wouldn't be so bad. But it doesn't, so the Phantoms end up being absolutely crucial to the main gameplay. It may be annoying, but the way FNAF 3 is, this ends up working out great. So really, as you can probably tell by now, the Phantoms aren't bad characters at all. They're hated for their appearance and, from what I get, their mechanics. Design enough for Ivor is quite dumb as for reasons previously stated. If you're going to hate a character for her appearance, you could quite literally go for Scrap Trap and nobody would be mad. If you're going to hate a character for their mechanic, then, well, do I really need to explain further? Just know this. If you dislike a character for a gimmick they have or their appearance, then you are clearly the type of person to be repeatedly told to not judge a book by its cover. 